<laughs> Do you ever wonder and look back at how you got started? What got you interested in a certain hobby? Well, for me, getting interested in EDC was very simple. I can point it back to a video that I watched over eight years ago by the Urban Prepper here on YouTube. I'm sure that you're familiar with it. It was all about the Altoids EDC-10. I know what you're thinking. You're rolling your eyes saying, not another Altoids 10 survival kit video, right? Because in this video, we're gonna look at this little kit and see exactly how viable it is in 2023. Let's go. Thank you so much for being a part of the channel here. We just had our biggest month ever, 300 plus subscribers, and it's still climbing. I know that's small potatoes for bigger channels, but man, it made all the difference in the world to me. And so I am so excited about the future of this channel. And here's the thing, why don't you just go ahead and subscribe? Because why not? It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and it helps out our channel quite a bit. And comment on the video. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you disagree with, agree with, but be nice and make sure that you're being civil with everybody. So again, thank you so much for being here. Let's get back to the video. So if you do a quick YouTube search, you'll find that there are hundreds and hundreds of really good quality videos on this topic of the Altoids Survival 10 and lookalikes and copies and different versions and all sorts of different stuff. My idea for this video is to ask some questions about whether or not this belongs in 2023. Is it still a viable thing that you can really kit out and carry around with you as an EDC item? The first question I wanna ask is one, would it actually be used or would it just be a novelty? Are the items inside that is something that you'll actually need from time to time? Or is it just gonna be something neat to show off to your friends? What items are gonna be included in the kit? How would it all be categorized? Would it be an all around kit? Would it be used for outdoor or survival or an urban survival? And so for this video, we're gonna be concentrating on the urban survival. I've got a lot of items in here that are meant to be for like urban survival, almost a, a toolkit of sorts personally that I've catered to myself to make sure that I can use it for my needs. But some of these items are gonna come in really handy if you're stuck in an urban environment, if you're stuck in a hotel or a hostel somewhere in a big city, or if you're stuck in an airport, some of these could come in handy. And the third question is, how am I going to carry it? Is it in a bag? Is it on my person? It can be pretty heavy and it can be pretty clunky to put in a pocket, but something like this puts, and you can throw it into a bag or perhaps a sling bag of some type, very, very easily and have a lot of tools at your disposal. So with these things in mind, let's go ahead and let's look at the kit. This is just your regular run of the mill Altoids 10. You can find these at any convenience store, any supermarket. Uh, you can find them in a lot of different places. These are a good aluminum metal. It is magnetic. And so if you have magnetic things, it's going to stick to the inside of it. The only modification that I've made to the outside of the 10 right here is a piece of gaffer tape. And uh, this is about a quarter inch wide gaffer tape. And uh, it has two purposes. It helps the lid shut. And really you can, see the, you can see the marker there where it's shut on there. It really helps it stay closed with such heavy items inside of it. Um, but it also, I can peel this off and use that as a strip of tape if I have to fasten something together in, in a pinch. Now you don't have to use uh, these Altoids tins. You can use, there's any number of tins that are available. I highly recommend the $6 tins from Countycom. They are fantastic looking. They're a little bit more, they feel a little bit more rigid, a little bit thicker aluminum on them. Uh, they snap together a little bit better. You don't have to have the piece of tape right there uh, to make sure it's fastened. But also they got this really rad topo pattern on the top of it. It's really, really cool. Six bucks, the Countycom is not sponsoring this video. Although, Countycom, if you want to, get in touch. So let's go ahead and open this up. And again, it snaps together well with that piece of tape. You'll notice I've got a microfiber cloth here cut uh, to size. And this is just a thin little microfiber cloth because you gotta um, clean glasses. I have glasses. This is really good for cleaning glasses, cleaning phone screens, uh, wiping them down and such. But it also is a twofold dual purpose here. It helps when I close and snap this together, it helps to maintain kind of, it helps everything not to clang around so much and it gives it almost a little buffer here for all of this equipment. So let's go ahead and open her up here. Now I'm gonna let you take a look at this. 
uh, for sure. But I got a number of items in here uh, that are relatively uh, very inexpensive, very, very cheap. Let's start off with the first here. And this is just a cord of what I call 550 cord. Um, you might call it paracord, but this is just a cord of 550 cord. Uh, it's just, uh, it's been braided into that kind of a thing with a loop on the end of it, so if I need it. But I can unravel this. This is about three feet, three to four feet of paracord. And um, you may not think, you may say, well, I, I'll never need that. Well, you never know. And also I have used these uh, from time to time, unraveled them, they're burning here at the end. So all you'd have to do is cut it, unravel it, and use it to tie something together. This and the tape comes in incredibly handy uh, in a pinch when you're especially trying to fasten something together or whatnot. Uh, this is a zebra pin. It's a telescoping pin, and I'll put a link on this um, in the show notes here or in the, in the video description. But this is just a nice little inexpensive zebra pin. And uh, of course, it telescopes out to a full-size pin, writes really, really well, actually, and it's cheap. Uh, these things are very, very cheap. And so again, a theme of this is kind of the, the cheapness of the aspect, and I could put a bunch of different things in here if I wanted to. And I'm gonna show you some optional things that I kind of switch out from time to time as well, but always good to have a writing utensil. One thing I don't have, and I wanna kind of side note here, one thing I don't have in this kit is a flashlight. Um, if you know of a good flashlight, in fact, I carry, and I'll go ahead and pull them out here, but I carry on my keys, uh, the one that I reviewed in a YouTube short, if you want to check that out, the link is up here, by the way. But this is the, um, the Olight Mini here, the iMini, and um, I really like this little light. And it's a magnetic closure, and it pulls off, and it would be really good, actually, to just put on uh, this right here to get it to... Um, to have a nice workspace or if I needed to have anything to, to show, but I love this little light. So that's the main reason why I don't have a light in here and I could probably fit this light in here and it would still be magnetic and be uh, functional. So, but if you have a recommendation for another um, light, another small tiny light that would fit inside an Altoids tin, uh, let me know down in the comments. Um, right here, I've got a Leatherman Style CS, and this is a really neat little multi-tool I have used, used, and used. It's got a lot of little tools on it. It's got a knife blade, of course. You would have to watch taking something like this. Of course, they say that it is TSA approved for plane travel, but I have gotten, I've probably lost several of these to, to plane them taking them up in the, in the, in the, in the airports. And so it's got your snippers right here. Uh, very, very good little tool. So you've got a blade right here, but then you've got some things on the inside. You've also got a pair of tweezers right here, which kind of double up on the tweezers a little bit. I've got another pair of tweezers in here that we're gonna look at. And then of course, you've got a little hook on here that also acts as a bottle opener. So you've got a little hook that can access acts, acts as a little bottle opener as well. Some other tools that would fit in here are the um, Gerber Dime. Of course, I think the Gerber dime is just a, yeah, it's a little too thick. So you would have to rethink your, your, your mode here. It's a little too thick to fit in there. Uh, but the Gerber dime is excellent because it's got, you've got pliers on here, which I love. I'm gonna do a whole video on mini multi-tools. That's coming up uh, next, I believe. We're gonna talk about some stuff uh, on that. But I love the Gerber dime. It just doesn't fit in my kit. But what does fit in my kit is the Leatherman Micra. Now you're probably very familiar with this, the Leatherman Micra. And it, it's got a similar kind of thing to the Leatherman Style CS, except it just looks a little bit more old school. You've got a lot of the same tools. You've got a flathead screwdriver, a file. You've got some tweezers. You've got a um, hinge opener, kind of a flathead right here. Of course, you've got your, um, your straight blade right there. Of course, you've got some cutters right there as well. And so this is a really good tool to put in here and it would also fit inside this. This is the only one we're looking at thin versus thick. And so if I put that up to the, if I put that up to the, the, the camera right there, you'll see that the Gerber dime is a little bit thicker than some of these tools. In fact, this Leatherman style CS is probably the thinnest of the tools, which is why it fits much better inside of this kit. So that's your multi-tool. And again, uh, there's a bunch of little multi-tools out there that would fit inside this kit. Now what you may see right here is a quarter inch driver. And this is a nice little Stanley set that they sell, I mean, just at Walmart for 10 or 12 bucks. 
It's got a bunch of different bits with it. It's got a, a directional thing. You can do directions. You can tighten or untighten something right here. Really well built, tiny, tiny little wrench here. And I've got the bits stored here in the center, the center tin. Now, these are some tiny storage tins. I can, I found them at, uh, I found them on County Com, but you can find them on Amazon. They, they slide like this and you can actually slide them open to reveal any number of little items. So I've got lots of different bits in here that will fit this ratcheting wrench. Now, the reason why you're thinking about, well, why has he got a ratcheting wrench when he could probably replace this with something else? Well, again, this is my OG kit. This is the kit that I've been using for eight plus years. I still carry this kit with me. It's still in my car. It still gets me out of jams. And so I've got like a little flathead bit right here. You put it in just like so, and you can ratchet it like that. Very, very cool stuff. I work a lot in computers and taking different devices apart and stuff like that. So it really helps to have a tiny little ratchet at my disposal from time to time. So I've got two other tins in here and I'll let you know uh, what those are here in a second. But stuffed here way in the side here is kind of in this side, we'll put it right here, kind of in this side right here is some Uncle Bill's Sliver Grippers. Of course, why would you leave home without them? Don't leave home without them, right? Pinpoint Precision, they've got this little locking thing that's on them as well. You can take them off and they're the best tweezers that you can possibly imagine. And so I always have these with me. I've probably got 20 pairs of these and different kits and stuff like that. Uncle Bill's sliver grippers. I've got a few uh, small zip ties. And again, fasteners, things holding things together. You wouldn't believe how much you need something like this until you actually need it. And so if I've got a cord and I'm one zip tie short that I need to ravel and make sure to fasten up here, if I need to do a quick car repair or something from a cable or a battery cable that I need to keep out of the way from something. This, these little things just get you a few tiny little zip ties. You can buy a pack of a million of them for probably 10 bucks. And so they're very, very cool. I've got some, uh, I mean, and this is just, you know, some down and dirty stuff right here, but I've got a few paper clips wrapped in different widths of, different widths of gaffer tape. And you may say to yourself, well, why do you have that? Well, these actually serve a multitude of purposes. I've got about three feet of gaffer tape here, about two feet of gaffer tape right here, and I've got a couple of paper clips. I can change out a SIM card with those paper clips. I can uh, get something and jury rig something if I need to, and likewise the same thing with a safety pin. If I've got a hole or a jacket that needs held shut or something like that, having a tiny little safety pin is going to be really, really valuable. Of course, I got even more gaffer tape kind of rolled up. That's about three feet right there. All in all, I've got about six or nine feet of gaffer tape in this little kit. I use gaffer tape like a crazy person sometimes to tape things shut to make sure, they're sure things are secure. Right here, I've got a, a mini fire starter kit. And then when I say mini, I mean it fits in one of these tiny little tins. I've got a couple of waterproof matches here. I've got some tinder. I've even got a couple of needles. Uh, and some all sorts of different things in here. I'm not gonna take all this out, but you'll see a big safety pin in there as well. Just a nice little fire kit. If I ever find myself, again, probably wouldn't in an urban environment, but if I find myself needing to have a fire to start a fire, you wouldn't believe uh, how useful some of these things are. And that kind of thing keeps for a long time. But what doesn't keep for a long time is my medical tin. And I have to con continuously replenish these items in a medical tent. And so I've got two doses in here of aspirin. I've got an anti-diarrheal because believe it or not, that comes in handy quite a bit. I've got one allergy pill to get me at least through a 24 to 48 hour period. And then of course I've got one of my blood pressure pills in case I really need it. So I have my family trait is high blood pressure. And so having one of those in reserve as an emergency reserve really, really helps. But these pills go out of date, so you have to uh, replenish them probably every six to 12 months, if not sooner. And so again, it's just nice to have this little kit out uh, and have these little items, these little medical items around as well. This is just a full-size bandage. Uh, I can use the scissors 
Uh, I don't have any other size bandages in here, but if I needed a smaller bandage than this, what I could do is I could cut that with the Leatherman style CS with the scissors there and make it smaller if I needed to. And so a Band-Aid, a standard Band-Aid, just a Band-Aid butterfly bandage there, just a, a large bandage that fits very nicely in the bottom there. Uh, things I would add, well, I would add maybe a $20 bill in here, a $20 bill, uh, probably no more than that. Don't want to put a $100 bill in there, but a $20 bill uh, would get you out of a pinch sometimes if you're out of cash or the credit card machine doesn't work or what have you. Uh, you would actually be able to pull that out and get you at least one or two meals out of that if possible. Another thing I would have in the kit is something like this, a USB drive for storage a USB drive for storage. This is a Lexar a USB 3.2, 32 gig store drive. The cool thing about it is, check this out, it flips around to USB-C or USB-A. Very cool. Um, you can use it on modern computers, USB-C. You can use it on older computers with Mac. And I would just have a couple of personal documents on here. You wanna encrypt those. You wanna make sure that those are password protected but to have a few documents on here in case of an emergency situation, um, especially if you lost power and you needed to have one of those documents, I don't imagine a situation where you would actually need one of those, but it's nice to have some of your information. And at 32 gigs, you can fit a bunch of documents, thousands and thousands of documents on there, even bigger files like pictures and things like that. You can fit a bunch of those on a drive like this. So I have torn apart this kit, let you see what's inside my kit. I want to know what's in your kit. Tell me what's in your kit, what you would add to my kit. This is again, personalized to me in the, in the primary way that I need. I'm not going to find myself out in the wilderness. And in case I do have that, I'm going to have another kit ready for that. My goal for this is actually to build a Altoids survival kit for every kind of situation uh, and have three, four, five of them sitting around ready to be used and ready to be picked up. So again, I want to hear from you. Do you think that these th kinds of things are viable? Do you think these things are useful anymore? Should we bring them back and should we have Altoids 10 survival kits, a resurgence in those in 2023? You let me know down in the comments. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Thank you for being here. Be sure to like, subscribe. All those different things helps us out a lot on the channel. Really, really appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Go out and have a blessed week.